everyone, welcome to Mama Scrapbook. As a psychotherapist, something that comes up all the time and it's a much requested topic is emotional eating. I'm gonna to talk to you about emotional eating. I'm gonna give you five tips on how to combat it. Are you an emotional eater? I am, you probably are. Everyone is really. As a culture, it seems that food is the answer to so many things, doesn't it? You know, oh, happy birthday. Let's eat a massive slice of cake to celebrate. Or, oh, you're having a crappy day. I'm gonna bring you around some chocolate or you come home, you've had a stressful day at work, or you've had a stressful time with the kids, and you know what, you just want some comfort food. Physical hunger is so different to emotional hunger. So emotional hunger is often really like sudden, it just comes on suddenly, and we feel like we need to meet it immediately. And I totally see this, I totally see this in myself. You know, I'm out with the kids in town, they're driving me up the wall, I go straight into boots, under the guise of buying cow pole and I just grab a chocolate bar. It kind of makes us feel better for a moment, but feelings haven't gone. Once we finished it, we just get this wave of guilt and ugh. What do we do about emotional eating? Number one, know your triggers. What finds you reaching for the chocolate, reaching for the pizza, reaching for those comfort foods? Is it Boredom, stress, anxiety, loneliness, what is it? Identify what it is that your triggers are. Number two, delay the eating. Delay the act of going over to the cupboard and getting something out. Tell yourself that you'll give yourself 10 minutes or five minutes if 10 minutes feels like a mountain. Five minutes, put your timer on for five minutes. I think if I'm still this desperate in five minutes, I can have it then. Number three, Find a way to meet that emotional need. And sometimes in that moment where you've got that need and you've got that chocolate and the two just seem like they're made for each other, this kind of thought of, oh, I need to, Anna told me that I need to meet that emotional need in another way. At that time, that's not going to work. So when you're actually not in that zone, now is the good time to work out what your triggers are and how you can meet that need. If you know that one of your triggers is loneliness, think, Right, what am I going to do? Is there someone that I can WhatsApp or text? Is there a family member I can call? What can I do that can meet that need of loneliness in me that I'm trying to fill with this? Number four, explore the options of talking to someone about these needs. If you're grieving, if you're anxious, if you're stressed, I'm sorry, but eating isn't gonna make them go away. What will help with those things is talking through those difficult emotions with someone who can support you. Number five, this is always going to be one of my five points with any mental health topic, be kind to yourself. This is a process, okay? If you've been using food as an emotional coping mechanism for weeks, months, years, it's not gonna change overnight. Be kind to yourself. There's enough guilt and shame probably that you're experiencing without loading another load of guilt and shame because you're trying to change it and it's not always working. It's a process. Be kind and compassionate with yourself. You're doing an amazing thing by even watching this YouTube video on how you can address it. So guys, there we go. Five things that will hopefully help you with emotional eating. I need to keep putting them into practice because I am terrible at this. And I will speak to you soon.